basically this is the LES calculation, very simple simulation. And this one is showing you a bed form uh, formation, initiation, formation, and migration in a real life stream that I will show you later uh, more cases about this. And this one is also contaminant transport in, a, in, a, in the same, basically, stream. So as you know, um, for example, simulation-based research for, for, for waterway restoration is very important, and it gives us uh, the opportunity to simulate the details of flow field and see uh, that the interaction between hydrodynamics and structures. And uh, through this code, VSL3D, we are also able to, to, uh, to simulate the interaction of flow structure and bit morphodynamics to see how a scour hole might develop around this structure and how we can, we can uh, basically optimize the design of different structures. And also I'm going to show you some test cases that we have done to simulate bed form initiation for uh, migration and growth of bed forms. And as you know, these bed, bed forms are kind of, they have kind of global characteristics. And they, they happen everywhere in different scale rivers with different scales. I'm going to show you uh, a couple of simulations that we have done to simulate small scale, intermediate scale, and also large scale bed forms in uh, real life streams. So as I told you, we always uh, look forward to see the physics-based simulations that are validated and are, um, uh, so for that reason, we use a Streamlab that is called Outdoor Streamlab OSL in St. Anthony Falls Laboratory, Laboratory, University of Minnesota. And also we use this uh, Indoor Streamlab to um, measure data and gather data for validations. So let me introduce the OSL very briefly here. Uh, as I told you, OSL is a uh, under controlled uh, experimental facility which um, is located at St. Anthony Falls Laboratory of University of Minnesota. We have uh, different uh, apparatus to measure flow field, scan the bed with you know, sub-centimeter resolution, and so these data can be imported into the VSL code so that we can simulate the flow field with a lot of details and also a bit more for dynamic and con uh, contaminant transport with a lot of details. So it has a lot of uh, applications, but what we are more concerned about here is to provide data for validating uh, VSL 3D, basically. So I will go, uh, go through the algorithms very briefly here. First of all, uh, VSL 3D is a curvilinear immersed boundary code. It means that you can have a curvilinear mesh along your river or stream or waterway, and then immerse different structures with highly complex geometry in it. And we blank out the simulation inside of these rock structures and do, do simulate the flow around them. And also, like here, uh, I show you a curvilinear channel. So we make a curvilinear mesh for that, and then we can immerse any different kind of structures in it. And we can have, because of this immerse boundary capability, we can immerse rock structures with, you know, with different uh, uh, characteristics. Like in this figure, I'm showing you how it works. And then we use immerse boundary method. This shows you the immersed body, which can be a rock. And then we interpolate uh, the, the velocity and pressure field and all the information for hydrodynamic on the IB node, which is the next node, the, ne the node next to the immersed boundary. And we can use wall model in this middle, uh, VSL3D to, to simulate uh, cases that are uh, more applied. The code is a second order central difference, differencing uh, on a staggered, hybrid staggered, non staggered read. Use a fractional step algorithm. And different turbines models are adopted in the model. And we can do DNS, LES, and URANS and RANS simulations. And of course, uh, we are able to do fluid structure interaction. 
to solve for the flow field and, this, and see the effect of flow and in the interaction between flow and any structure within the flow. And the code is fully parallel so that we can run huge simulations on parallel clusters and supercomputer as I will do it here for you so you can see. For example, uh, through these validation cases, I will show you some cases for. For example, this is a rock vein structure uh, that is installed in an indoor flume in St. Anthony Falls lab. And then, then uh, measurements have been done for this case, and we make the a mesh, and we also have scanned the geometry of these rocks. So the scanned geometry of the rocks are imported into the model, and uh, we, we make a mesh, background mesh for the flow field as well. And uh, as you see, the Reynolds number for this flow in the experiment was about four, you know, 40K. Uh, flow field measurement using ADV is provided. And uh, you see the detail of this. And rocks are treated as image boundary. And also you see that we can also uh, si directly simulate the roughnesses. We also use a, a wall model to, to, to simulate this roughness effect. But also the important part is that we we can directly simulate the roughness so that we, so this is a LES simulation. Very fine simulation though. Sometimes we don't need to have such fine simulation, but because the code is parallel, it gives us this capability so that we have a lot of nodes, a lot of, to resolve it really good. And this shows you an instantaneous flow field, uh, velocity magnitude, the flow is coming from this way, from top right to bottom, and this, Data shows you the comparisons for streamwise transfers and vertical velocity at the long this section. And also uh, turbulence statistics. So the other capability is free surface modeling. We use level set method. I don't want to go through details of this, but um, we are able also to, to simulate the, the free surface development and couple that with flow field simulation. And also we can couple that with bed morphodynamics. So assume that there is bed forms forming in a live bed channel, in a mobile bed channel. These bed forms will have some effect on the flow field and also free surface. We can couple everything together to see the effect of them. And since the code is uh, very good, scalable, we can use a lot of nodes and run the whole thing on like 500, 1,000 CPUs and get very good results within a quite you know, short amount of time. So in this case, in this slide, I'm going to show you some of our simulations. This is, again, a uh, cross vein structure installed in the same indoor flow. Flow is coming from this, uh, this point along this row. And then uh, we have done some measurements for flow field in bed morphodynamic because it will create some scour down the stream. And this video shows you the simulated free surface. So this is simulation. As you see, we could, the level set, uh, first of all, we do morph uh, hydrodynamic. You solve for hydrodynamic using LES and then you all uh, level set equations to get the free surface. This, is, this shows you the, this video shows you the simulation. And we, as you see, we have, you can see a lot of high, very small scale hydric jumps uh, in different directions. And these are slides showing the validations. Points, uh, circles show you the measurements for the free surface here, RMS of free surface, and the elevation at different locations along the structure. Those are in a very good agreement with uh, simulations. So again, now I'm going to show you some flow field measurements and simulations to validate the code along the same channel, uh, OSL. Uh, as I told you, OSL is a under control facility that we can measure the flow field. We can feed sediment at the inlet and uh, see the effect of uh, sediment on the flow. We can feed contaminant, different kind of contaminant, and measure them and uh, study different kind of things. So here, I'm going to show you our simulation for flow field in this channel. As you see, we scanned the whole thing again with a sub centimeter resolution. And this shows you how detailed is the geometry. We import the XYZ data of this scanned geometry into code VSL3D. VSL3D uses this whole geometry and we run the flow. And, uh, and also we use, uh, we measure the free surface elevation uh, and feed that into the model. And for a, uh, 
the, the specific case here that was bank full flow, the Reynolds number is 100K, and uh, using about 70 million grid nodes, and uh, as you see, the roughnesses are modeled. We use LES to do simulation, and as this shows you a um, instantaneous snapshots of flow field, velocity magnitude that we calculate at free surface. And uh, this video shows you how detailed is the simulation. Flow is coming here, and hit comes here and hit the outer stream bank and goes downstream. We have riffle zones here. In, in the riffle zone, you have these cobbles that are large uh, roughnesses. So it creates a highly turbulent flow over this ruffle zone. And it kind, it's like kind of a you know, free jet hitting, wall jet hitting the uh, downstream flow. Uh, this is, uh, I forgot to say, it's uh, uh, contours of velocity magnitude that you see. Uh, looking at different levels, this was free surface, but this model is 3D because it's called VSL 3D. So we have like uh, more than 100 nodes for this specific uh, simulation along the depth, the depth of the flow. So uh, if you, uh, you want to, we can look at different levels of, of the flow field. So this, for example, this figure shows you the details of the flow field near bed, and as you see the roughnesses, the effect of these roughnesses, very small scale uh, eddies around these roughnesses are modeled very good. And this figure shows you the uh, validations for different, uh, different locations actually that we have done. And the power spectra of the uh, simulation on the red showing you that comparing it with the blue one which is measured power spectra of the flow field at a specific location. And this figure again shows you the same simulation, but a snapshot at the free surface. And uh, this shows you the contours of uh, TKE, turbulence kinetic energy, showing you the shear layer and how the flow field develops around it. And it's a, we could, uh, these are streamlines of flow field showing the um, uh, location of uh, this uh, recirculation zone at this point. And, um, here I'm showing you the, the visualization of by injecting some material from the free surface and taking a picture, long shot picture of the free surface uh, in the OSL. You can compare this with the, with the simulation and as you see the visualiz this visualization, we, should, we see that the convergence of this flow field is very close to what we can see in the OSL. But one important thing here is that we have to be careful about uh, what kind of model we are going to choose for our purpose. Here I'm showing you LES simulation that I showed you. And if I do a URAN simulation using a K omega model, I will get something like this. And as you see, due to the fact that a URANS model is very diffusive, you can't capture a lot of details of the flow field. And then if you're going to do coupled simulation to to simulate flow field and also a bit more for dynamics, you can't see the effect of flow field at this, for example, uh, recirculation zone here if you use URANS model. So we have to be careful about the kind of model that we use for our purpose. Uh, we can time average the solution after we are done. Yeah. Yes. So uh, again, here in these two slides, I'm showing you there are two cells. This paper, this work has been published in this paper by uh, Kong and Sotopoulos. There are two cells that are showing up during LES simulation. And th as you see, the cross section shows that this, this flow is not isotropic. But if you treat it, if you solve it with a URANS model, you basically would get isotropic solution for it. And again, uh, in this very short slide, I'm trying to uh, show you the difference between uh, uh, simulation methods. If you use uh, for a DNS, with a DNS simulation, direct numerical simulation, basically we capture all the details of eddies and whatever uh, you know, uh, flow structure that exists in, the, in, the, in the, the nature. But the fact is that DNS simulation for a engineering test case would be very expensive so, and not applicable. So what we do is that we a filter 
use a filter size uh, to forget about some of those very small eddies and instead modeling them with subgrid scale model and do LES, which is larger dissimulation. In LES, we only focus our attention on simulating the larger scale eddies. And, uh, and then uh, we also model the smaller scale eddies with subgrid scale model. There are a lot of different subgrid scale models, and we have two of them in our code. In VSL3D, we have dynamic one and constant and small grain scale model. Of course, in URANS models, you basically don't get anything because, in my opinion, they give you uh, some non-physical thing. They, they, they average out everything. You time average the solution. But they are, of course, very important for engineering applications. So in the next test case, I'm going to show you some of uh, my simulations on um, uh, turbine flow and also the contaminant transport in real life streams. In this figure, I'm showing you a, a Greek, which is 30 miles south of Minneapolis in Minnesota. Uh, this creek is called Eagle Creek. The length of it is about, uh, I would say, 200 uh, yards, uh, about 150 meters. So the, in a project, we wanted to simulate this, the, the whole thing. We, we wanted to, to study the, the uptake of nitrate material to the flow. So, uh, in this simulation, first of all, we did some surveying to scan the, the geometry of the stream. And because this is a real stream, real life stream, so you have these fallen logs in it. So, but they're important in, in, in if you want to do a good simulation for contaminant transport, you need to have those. So in our simulation, not only we scan the bed, the geometry of the bed, and we consider all of these details of the geometry, you also simulate the effect of them. So as you see, we, we scan the geometry of the logs, and we put them in the simulations. And this shows you a, uh, a zoom in uh, of this point. As you see, we have a bifurcation here, and like three logs, three logs are located at this point. And this video, I'm showing you only free surface. I'm not showing you water body here. You don't see water. but we inject some material for a short period of time. It's a pulse release. We inject some salt, let's say, at the inlet, and then stop the injection for a while. I mean, I'm sorry, we, we inject it for a while and stop it after 32 seconds. And then this material goes along the stream, and as you see, everything is modeled, basically. Uh, you can see the detail of the geometry, bed geometry. Uh, the, the, width, the average width is about three meters, two and a half to three meters. Uh, and then um, through this uh, LES simulation using VSL3D, uh, we are now studying the, the effect of different structure, like logs, uh, the geometry of the uh, stream, and different things on the, F, on the resident time of, let's say, this kind of contaminant. Let's say, as you see, we can study the effect of this, uh, the resident time, uh, this bifurcation, and right down the stream of the island, you have a bifurcation, and the effect of that on resident time is obvious. Now, uh, I will, uh, for, that, for the test case, for, this, uh, for Eagle Creek simulation, I will do a simulation here for you later. So I will submit the job for you so that you can see how we do this simulation. Uh, next, I'm uh, going to talk about the morphodynamic module of the code. In this uh, morphodynamic part, we, as I told you, uh, we, we do fluid structure interaction that uh, we, uh, we solve for the flow field. And then uh, once we, we are done with solution, sol solving the flow field, then we project the solution of flow field over the bed, over the mobile bed. And now we have bed shear stress velocity and everything on the bed. And then we solve the excellent equation with, with uh, net deposition and also uh, entrain net entra and entrainment rate. We consider everything, suspended load, bed load, and everything to solve for the mass balance equation to solve for the bed morphodynamics. Bed load is calculated using this formula. 
and uh, we solve also for suspended load as well. So um, here I'm going to show you uh, a couple of the test cases um, for the simulation that we have done, uh, coupled simulation, bit morphic dynamics, and hydrodynamics. In, in this slide, I'm showing you the result of experiment done by uh, Venditti in uh, British Columbia. He has studied the, the evolution, initiation of bed forms. These are very small scale bed forms, though. They are like six centimeters in amplitude. They're not that huge. Uh, we call them small scale uh, uh, bed forms. As you see, the first day, um, this study was really good to, to show that what is the origin of bed forms, how they form. So we have done the same simulations. These are non-cohesive material, non-cohesive sediments, and the Reynolds number is about 76K for this case. We have done a lot of simulations for this, um, and uh, we are publishing a paper in JFM very soon um, uh, to show the, the effect, uh, how best form effects flow field and what is the interaction between those two and uh, figure out what is the cause of bed form initiation. So in his uh, study, Venditti, Venditti actually studied the different patterns of bed forms in his experiment. He showed that everything starts with a crosshatch kind of pattern at the beginning, like 10 seconds after flow is, is running over the bed, over the mobile bed. And then he shows that these bed forms uh, these cross hatches uh, form uh, some nodes that he calls chevron nodes, and then they connect together and grow in size and wavelength and amplitude. And then they finally lead to formation of bed forms and migration of them. Like in this figure, I'm showing you the, his result, experimental result of them after they form. They have a 2D stage bed form, and then they pass to a 3D stage, and the, the at some point, the amplitude is, is co will be constant, but the wavelength of bed forms increases. We did the same simulation, a coupled simulation, uh, and this video shows you only the bed. We are not, I'm not showing the flow field over it, but just the bed. And as you see, uh, in our simulation using VSL3D, we are capturing quite a uh, lot of those uh, um, features that Venditti captured in his experimental work. Uh, like, uh, like you see this effect here, this effect here at their 3D stage of development, bare form shows, and this figure in the middle shows you the experiment. Uh, so as you see, we're capturing a lot of uh, um, phenomena during bed form um, development. In this figure, I'm showing you the bed uh, topography in the simulation. As you see, like 10 seconds after simulation, we are capturing the same chevron nodes that are also captured in the experiment. <coughs> and they grow in size and amplitude. And then after a while, we get to 3D. And he also, sh this, these are three snapshots of the simulations showing how the bed forms can merge within in, in our simulation to, to shape larger uh, bed forms while they're, they're migrating down, a, down a stream. And I have to say that this is a very uh, expensive simulation that uh, I would say it's, this is the most expensive simulation, coupled simulation. It's a LES, bed morphic dynamic simulation, um, coupled with um, about 100 million grid nodes. Very expensive. I used like 500 CPUs for like a month to do this simulation. Yeah, this is, uh, well, the reviewers of JFM uh, ask us to do this again. I mean, finer, fun, finer simulation, so we are doing it. Talk a little bit about what are the modeling these forms. Well, one thing was that. Mm, there is a uh, hypothesis that says you are going to simulate the development of bed forms. You need to uh, capture the Kelvin-Helmholtz instabilities. So for that, you need to have simulate stratification. 
as well, because the, the stratification, the concentration of sediment near the bed is, is the thing that causes bed form initiation. If shown here in these simulations that you don't need to have those, and the cause of bed form initiation is basically comes from flow fill, and that the pattern of turbulent flow, and uh, specifically the sweep e event, the turbulent sweep event that leads to the formation of these crosshatch uh, bed forms. There are a lot of physics involved, and we have discussed that in, in a 100-page paper in JFM that is coming out soon. Both, yeah. Yeah, for this, yeah, we have, well, we have, yes. This has suspended load, and I will show you in a couple of slides in, in here. Here I'm comparing, I will show you the slide that shows that. In, in this slide, I'm showing com comparison between simulation and also a different snapshot in time with the measurements. So this shows the celerity of the waves and wavelengths and amplitude. In this video, I'm showing you so the same channel, the, tr the 3D channel, basically. If in this video, I'm showing a cross-sectional view in the center line of the channel. As you see, this is a coupled simulation. So flow field influences the bed, bed influences the flow field, as you see the structure changing. On the top, you see the velocity magnitude here. I'm showing you the suspended sediment concentration. It's a stratified flow. So the, see the initiation, they, they start to grow. I mean, the, the initiation time is very important to, to be able to capture. And this is the first time we are capturing it. Show you, show this video again. So one important thing here to notice is that, as you see, the scale, the time scale of flow field microwaves very different from scale, time scale of bed forms, right? Like here, you have a highly turbulent punch of flow going like for five meters, but the bed form migrates like five centimeters, right? So this is what makes it really expensive to do coupled uh, hydrodynamics and morphodynamic simulation. Here I'm also showing you the current structures that are developing over the bed using Q criteria. These are at the initiation for the first uh, 50 seconds of the simulation. As you see, these are the vertical structures that are forming. And we have also shown in the paper that how they uh, carry a patch of highly condensed sediment, suspended sediment, and heat it to the free surface. So um, other test case that I'm going to show you here is intermediate scale. These were, I mean, the things that I showed you are very small scale um, bed forms. Now I'm going to show you some of the bed forms that we have captured in OSL, outdoor stream lab in our experimental facility here. As you see in this figure, we have installed three rock weighing structures with real you know, real rocks. And um, there are some bed forms here. You can see these bed forms that are uh, migrating down the stream. And we have also tried to simulate this, uh, this migration of these bed forms as well. And again, um, um, we have to tell you that we feed some sediment here from at the free surface. We inject some, some sediment at the inlet of the stream. So this, to, to just make sure that the bed forms and the, the flow of sediment is natural. We don't want to go run out of sediment within our stream. So here I'm showing you some of our simulations. This is with another kind of structure, which is called um, um, bandway weirs. I'm sorry, uh, barbs or uh, barbs, yeah. And also over here, I'm showing you some, some of, uh, all of these experiments have been done in OSL to study the effect of rock weighing structures on the flow field and on the bed geometry. So um, as you see, we have captured these red parts showing the crest of a wave, a, a sand wave. And the scale of these structures is quite larger than what we saw in the previous slide. These are about 20 centimeters, 30 centi centimeters in amplitude. Um, so. As you see in the simulation, we are able to capture using VSL3D and LES. Uh, we are ca able to capture the, 
the migration formation of them. And it's also important to say that uh, using URANS model, we are not going to be able to do this kind of simulation to, to capture the, the uh, evolution of, of bed forms and initiation of them. So for that reason, I've done a lot of simulation. It doesn't matter which resolution you choose. If you even do a finer simulation using URANS, you're not going to be able to capture these bed forms. For the previous simulation that I showed you, those smaller scale uh, bed forms, there also you are not going to be able to capture the bed forms using URANS. You need LES to be able to capture the, the vertical, the, the perturbation necessary for formation of bed forms. And here I'm showing you uh, over this S, over this S uh, trajectory, I'm showing you the, um, these bed forms. Um, characteristic. It's a characteristic that shows you the, the S over time. So this, these are my bed forms that are merging together to form larger bed forms. And then larger bed forms also merge together to form larger bed forms at the end of channel. I showed you those um, development of bed forms. You can see them here too. So uh, these bed forms are also measured experimentally. And if we compare out simulation with the measurements, we can see that the, we are within a good range of agreement with the measurements in terms of celerity, wavelengths, and amplitude of the captured wave, wavelengths. So now, in this slide, I'm showing you some of the bed forms, very large bed forms that we have also captured. So we call these um, bed forms uh, larger, in, that are in larger rivers, uh, macro scale bed forms. These are like this is these two streams are like about um, a kilometer long, and the width of these two channels is about 30 meters wide. And like for example, in this video, I'm showing you like this is uh, this has been done in a project for NCHRP to study the effect of uh, uh, stream restoration structures on the uh, morphology of different ri rivers. And as you see, we are able to capture the bed forms. They, they initiate, and also they migrate downstream. The amplitude of these uh, bed forms is about one meter, which is quite large. And also the wavelength is about uh, 10 to 30 meters. So they're quite uh, uh, gigantic, I would say. And uh, one important thing here is, again, that we use the URANS model to capture these bed forms. So you don't need necessarily to, do, to use LES for such a large bed form, because here you have a larger perturbation. You have a huge river. That perturbation, even with uh, URANS, is large enough for you to uh, initiate bed forms and their uh, migration. And if you compare this like uh, uh, with like this top figure shows you a figure from Gary Parker for a uh, real, life, real life large river. And as you see in this part, at the apex of this river, you're seeing the same similar kind of bed forms. This one is also a, a, a snapshot of bed forms in our experimental uh, 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 stream uh, OSL that shows you similar kind of patterns for bed forms. So, uh, we use VSL3D actually to, as I told you, in a stream restoration project to design some guidelines uh, for different stream restoration structures, rock vein, uh, j, uh, j hooks, uh, bend wave ears, cross vein, and different structures. So to do that, um, it, it's quite impossible to, um, to use experimental facilities to develop a guideline because you would need a lot of simulations. You, need, you would need to install the structures, a lot of different uh, patterns of the structures and try different numbers of these structures at different locations to optimize the number, location, and angle of different structures. But we were able to use VSL3D uh, to do this uh, actually task. And um, in, a, in a different presentation um, next, I will show you how uh, we, we did this. And I also will uh, run a case with these cases for you. So let me go to my next presentation which is about uh, 
let me go to my presentation about Eagle Creek. And uh, after we are done with this, I will show you how I submit a job to, for the same simulation. If I'm able. It again, please. Uh, we have two options. I will show you. Uh, one is a constant uh, and Smogorinsky uh, model. The other one is dynamic Smogorinsky model. So um, here in this short slide, uh, I will show you s uh, the simulation. Oops, I'm sorry. I went back to the same slide, actually. I will show you some of our uh, uh, Eagle Greek simulation. And after, right afterward, I will submit a job, submit the same job, basically. So um, Eagle Creek is located here. And this is the whole length. The two uh, yellow parts are the places that we have measured the concentration. One upstream. This is upstream. This is downstream. And then we have two transfers locations for blo uh, flow field measurements. And these are benchmarks for doing the, the scanning the bed and doing survey. So this is the, f the geometry. One important thing is also that I, I need to mention this. Uh, we also surveyed the whole, uh, the whole length of the stream to figure out different locations. Like you have sand part, you have bedrock, you have gravel part. Uh, at, the, at each location, you have different roughnesses for the bed. That needs to be considered in the simulation. So we have considered different roughnesses a different uh, in our wall model model uh, simulation to, to make sure that we are, um, we are doing it right. So and then we have logs, like 15 logs or 13 logs that are fallen logs that are immersed. The whole geometry of bed is immersed. And then we have a curvilinear mesh covering the thing. I will show you later. And uh, this shows you only the flow field, flow field simulation using um, LES. As a matter of fact, it's not a very high, well, it's a high resolution simulation, but it's not very expensive because we use only, uh, I would say, 25 million grid nodes for this. And to get this flow field, you would need uh, 120 CPUs for 10 days. So it's quite uh, less expensive, I would say. So you see the, the, the flow field? So here we have a bedrock with a lot of roughnesses. So that's why uh, it's, it shows you the free surface, only free surface. Um, but it's a 3D simulation. So we have different layers, 100 different layers below this, too. This shows you the velocity magnitude non-dimensionalized by the mean flow velocity. So 0 to 3. 3 means that velocity at this point, which is white, is three times the mean flow velocity. And you have the logs. A lot of recirculating zones here, 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 because of the logs. And also, I mean, it's a, uh, and then once you're done with this, then you can inject your material. So we had two different experiments here. And I simulate both of those experiments. So this one is a plateau release in which we don't stop the, the injection. But this video, you have already seen it, which is a, uh, a slog release or pulse, pulse release. So we stop releasing. So in this one, you can see the recirculating zones. LES can nicely capture this large eddy, uh, um, large eddies um, for you. And like, look at this part here. You have a uh, quiet, still water down the stream of the island. That's why you see the um, circulation, recirculation of the. And again, I have to uh, say that this, in these videos, you only see the, the material, the concentration of material. Water body is not shown. So 
so I cut off the water body so you can see also only see the <laughs> the flow of uh, this uh, material. Uh, at some point, actually, we stop the injection. So you'll see. At some point, we stop the injection, and uh, we couldn't really release the material forever. So we have to stop it at some point. I think after eight hours or so, we stopped it. Weather was getting cold, so we needed to wrap everything up. I just want to show you the negative wave of this material after stopping the injection. Uh, but it would take five minutes, so I can't actually, basically. The video is quite large, the video file is quite large, so the um, Let me go here and show that video separately. So once the material is uniformly distributed uh, over the whole uh, ridge of the um, uh, stream, then we stop the injection, and so at this point, the injection is stopped. So the negative wave of the concentration, and as you see, the, the red shows you concentration, volume fraction of one uh, versus zero at white. It takes quite a while to, for the material to get, um, they get kind of trapped in this part. And this contributes to the resident time, a long, very long resident time of the material downstream of this. And this, um, in the next slide, I will show you um, the time series of concentration measured versus um, simulation, that how accurate is our simulation capturing these um, time scales in resident time. Goes on. Takes quite a while. And I go back to so in this slide I'm showing you uh, the time series of the blue one shows you the the simulation result for time series of the concentration. This shows that these two are the the blue one is for upstream section, upstream a local point time series, and the red one shows you the time series of the concentration down at, that, at the downstream uh, section. And as you see, circles are for measured values, and um, lines are the simulation results using this LES. And as you see, the, the agreement is quite good, and we see some fluctuations uh, I've discussed the reason for these fluctuations in, in, uh, in a paper uh, that is being published in JGR that is um, related to the, these large size eddies that are fluctuating. We don't see uh, the fluctuations uh, in the measurements because the measurements uh, are, are a time kind of time averaged. So, like we measured the concentration for like let's say 10 seconds and time average for 10 seconds. So you don't see that fluctuation in. And also for the slug release, as you see here, we have two peaks. These, this is for the upstream one. This shows you the downstream section. One thing is that for the downstream section, the LES couldn't uh, capture the peak of the 
basically concentration that goes um, um, that is uh, due to the fact that the resolution is not that high. We are doing another simulation with higher resolution and getting better results. And also, I need to mention that for these uh, uh, time series, we have a hydraulic, hydraulic lab that we put it in the stream, and it has a point measurement. In they say it measures the, the concentration at a level which is three centimeters above the bed. So I tried in my simulation to, to pinpoint the same point and extract the time series at the same location. This is, I mean, the, the, the hydrolab might not be that accurate about the, the, the location of this point. So if I change the point of measurements, so it, it will show a lot of difference. And uh, this is basically the same thing, showing you same time series. Um, and these are the velocity, I mean, the, the validations for the velocity at those two cross sections that I showed you. Now I'm going to switch to my supercomputer here and uh, try to run this case for you, and then we can go back to morphodynamics case. So now we are going to do a um, flow field and uh, a contaminant transport using VSL3D for the same test case, uh, Eagle Creek. So I would say it's uh, quite easy to use this code. Um, we have uh, had uh, guests from different institutes coming over um, using the code for like one or two weeks, and then they were able to do very nice kind of simulations using this code. But to do that, you would need some, some stuff, like so you need a supercomputer, because it's simply not possible to do a, a, a you know, fine resolution with a laptop or a PC. So here, I'm um, connected to my uh, computer, and um, So here I have a, so here I have this test case for Eagle Creek simulations. First of all, I have made the geometry of the the river that I will show you later how I made it, and you will see the 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 the, the mesh of the uh, domain for the flow field, and also as I told you, like these are. Uh, different, I have like uh, different files here, IBM data, IBM data, IBM data. Those uh, represent the geometry of locks. So XYZ data, it's very easy. You go to a uh, grid generator. It could be uh, GridGen, it could be uh, Gambit, or different softwares. You create the geometry, you mesh it, you export it. It will export a XYZ file for you representing the geometry. You put it here, and the uh, VSL3D is able to read that and import the geometry in there. And also, I have a control file. And also, I have a grid file that is the same for the curvilinear mesh. I will show you later. I have a control file here that is uh, here, control file. In the control file, I um, by the way, you would need Linux machine too, so it's a Linux, a Linux based uh, code. Um, so here, like, I have different parameters. I, well, you don't need these three for now. It's very simple. You say that I need a time step, DT is time step of uh, non dimensional time step of 0.01. I will have, we have different versions of post and solver. Hydro, the hydrodynamic module has different, uh, Poisson's equation is the, basically the pressure equation that needs to be solved. So we have different options for post and solver. One is, works the best for me, so I use it. And then LES2 means uh, dynamic small grand scheme model. 
I can use dyna LES1, which is a constant Smagronetsky model. I have wall function in this model because it's a huge river and I don't resolve the near bed region all the way down to the wall because it would be really expensive for me. So I use a wall function. We have different wall functions. I think five different wall functions. I prefer to use one. And then here I can say what is my roughness size, the effective roughness size. And let me just forget about this. Here I said my, this is my flux, which is the discharge. We know the discharge of that stream, so we have to enter it here. For this case, it's this one. And the range is urans. I don't use urans, so I put it zero. So don't use urans. I don't want to re have a bed morphine dynamic sediment is off. And then it's not a live bed, it's a uh, rigid bed, but I use it somewhere else. I solve for convection diffusion equation to, to trace the tracer concentration. And I don't, I'm not supposed to deal with density current here, so it's off. Uh, CFL numbers, VNN numbers, and then implicit solver for the, it's a pressure based uh, uh, method, so we, we different options. Um, Immerse boundary method, yes, we want to use Immerse boundary method, so it's on. Immerse boundary method number three. How many bodies I have here? 14, because we, I got 40. Four, uh, one is for the whole bed geometry and banks, and, and 13 is for each fallen logs, so a lot of different logs. And uh, TIO tells me that, like TIO of 200 means that after each 200 time steps, save me some results. It's just for sh seeing what's happening. I don't want to um, save results every every one time step because it would need a huge, uh, basically, uh, memory disk. So I say every 200 seconds, a step time steps do it for me. And here is the Reynolds number. These are something different that we don't need. Uh, and uh, inlet one. Uh, dictates the type of boundary condition at the inlet that we are using. You can say how many total time steps, uh, total steps that you want to do. And uh, as you see, um, it's a very easy thing to, to apply. You, have to, you can play with different parameters to see like, what is the effect of uh, roughness height. What is the effect of this? I mean, how come? How can you uh, use different wall functions and different time steps? How they affect your solution? And also, we have boundary conditions here in this bsc.dat file. And uh, this this line, the only one line uh, here is needed. So I say minus one, minus one, which means that um, I have solid boundaries, a two part, and then 10 uh, is the free surface boundary condition, five is inlet, four is outlet, because you, uh, you would need this boundary condition for your solution so that you, your model knows that, like at the outlet, you use Newman boundary condition for parameters. It's quite easy, it doesn't change that much, so you don't need to change this boundary condition at all for, uh, you know, it's a typical boundary condition that we, all, we always use. That, that will turn on the I'm sorry? No, I'm sorry. I, I for, uh, no, the level set goes to uh, control file. I'm sorry. I, I will show you later. You say level set one, which means that turn on the level set. Then automatically this 10 will go away. You know what I mean? Then you will solve for free surface. You have to the level set in this scale. No, 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 no. For this, for this test case, I didn't solve level set. Yeah, we. <laughs> that would be really expensive to do it. So what we did was that we measured the free surface with a good resolution, so we knew that what is, what is the uh, elevation of water at different locations of the stream. So we and then we feed that in, into our model, into the mesh that we made, so that the model knows that what is the free surface. Okay, so we got everything ready here. So the only thing, uh, my executive, executable file is tests one, tests, uh, tests, yeah, here. So this is my executable file. Uh, hopefully you will, uh, I mean, people can have access to the f uh, 
to the source code so they can compile the code for their own own or they can use a already compiled code and uh, here I'm going to submit this job Q sub minus So this is the job that I'm going to submit. Uh, let, let me first show you how I submit this. So there is a sh or shell file here. Uh, that is uh, something which I can say how many CPUs use for me. So uh, I say use 12 nodes, and I have 16 CPUs on each node. So the total number, I think, would be 160 CPUs, not that much. Um, hopefully we, we are able to use those because my colleagues might use. So I'm going to submit that. So if this will basically, we will use the tests executable file to simulate this Eagle Creek that I did it. And you already saw the result, but I'm going to do it here. So I submitted the job on our supercomputer in University of Minnesota. And as you see, I'm running it here. So this is hot. This is another simulation of mine. Oh, this, this, 192 simulation we are using right now. This is another simulation of mine. So um, now we can, uh, yeah. And then uh, if you want to use this code, then you would be able to see what's going on. So if you go to ERR file, it shows you what's going on. What is, well, it's, it takes quite a while for it to start showing up something. And um, in the ERR file, you are going to be able to see uh, how, what is the convergence of your momentum solver, what is the convergence of your Poisson solver, what is the convergence of your convection diffusion solver, and uh, if you're running on morphodynamics, see what is the convergence of your uh, morphodynamic solver, and also the, um, for the level set, as well for the free surface. So as you see, it's quite simple to use the code for. Yeah, it's going on. It's uh, showing up something. It's simulating the case. Now I assume it's reading the geometry. It takes quite a while to read the geometry. It's a huge dream of geometry. You see different parameters. We will come back to the simulation later. Let it go on. OK, now that uh, we are done with uh, this simulation, I will go to another um, slide. I will show you uh, another slide, and I will come back again to this. Let me uh, talk here about the bed hydrodynamic and bed morphodynamic simulation that we did for stream illustration structures. So. First of all, as I told you, we use this VSL3D to, to develop guidelines for stream restriction structure uh, different streams. For this purpose, after a long study, we, we chose two different streams, which, uh, like this stream is, to, these two streams are representative of streams. So like this one is a sand, called sand bedded stream in which uh, we have very fine sands on the bed. And the, the, the length of the whole meander is like 120 meters. I'm sorry, uh, 1.2 kilometers. This one is a gravel bedded stream, which is, um, uh, again, over one kilometer long. The width of these channels is like 30 to 50 meters. So they are huge rivers. There, we have chosen to have, deal with these rivers because we are going to install these structures in real streams, so we need to have those. And, and then we, we use different structures, we install different structures to study their effect, like rock vein, j hook, bend vein, veer, cross vein, uh, step cross vein, and w veers. So, like, um, using the, the standard. Uh, standards that USPR has developed, you have to protect, if flow is from this direction, you have to protect the outer bank uh, from 1B upstream of apex to 
like one and a half feet downstream of Apex because this is the region that you, have, you will have the deepest cover and your outer bank will basically collapse and you will have this erosion. This shows you OSL, Outdoor Stream Lab, experimental facility in our lab. That shows the deepest discover part of the same part. And also this shows you part of our simulation, showing that in a sand bedded river, you will have a very deep discover at the same location. And this is again a gravel bed river, showing that you will have this problem of uh, unstable outer bank at the same location. So what we did here in this study actually was that we tried the uh, for each river, like in this figure you see a uh, gravel bedded river. We installed different uh, structures. We st let's start with rock vein. We, we installed two rock veins, 20 degree and 30 degree, okay? And then we ran the flow field, and then we ran the bed morphodynamics, ran it for like a year, and because of a, uh, I, I forgot to tell you about this capability that DSL3D has. Uh, we are using a methodology that this, uh, this uh, basically uh, disconnects the, f the time scale between flow and, and bed morphodynamics. Because they have diff very different time scales, right? So in, the, in this method, you can run for a very long time. Like this shows you a simulation for like six months of bed physical time. Six months physical time on this river. So after six months, you will have, and if you time, it takes six months for it to get to equilibrium. And then you time average your solution and you get this bed, uh, bed morphodynamics. This shows you the geometry, uh, elevation basically. You have point war here, deepest cover hole here. So you have two different uh, uh, rock veins. Simulate the thing and then we look at the result and uh, decide about the effectiveness of different angles. Like here, for example, we, after another thing, the, 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 the study, uh, the result, actually, we figured out that using uh, 20 degree would be a better option here. Because of the, in this figure, you can see in the uh, lower part, you can see the, the difference of a baseline case, which is the river without a structure, and between the, the baseline case and the case with a structure. As you see, having this structure, you have a tall vein in the, you shift basically the target away from the outer vein. And also for the, the other stream, we did the same simulation. And this shows you the results of the simulation for another structure, which is bent wave here, different angles. We start from 50 degree, 60 degree, and, and I'm sorry, it goes from 20, 30, 50, 60, and 80 degrees. Different degrees of bend by veer, and we see the effect of different ones, and we choose the one which is more effective. As, and then, in most of our simulation, we figure out that having just one structure is not gonna provide you with enough protection, because you might protect this part, but again, the Erosion will happen downstream, a little bit downstream. So you would need another structure downstream. How to choose where we are going to install the next structure downstream? To do that, we use our turbulent kinetic energy with, uh, because it's a 3D simulation with uh, depth average, basically, the TKE, or turbulent kinetic energy, uh, over depth. And then this turbulent kinetic energy, if you uh, show it, and also on the bed, I'm showing you, the circles are showing the deepest scour part deepest scour hole on the, on the river. So as you see, the, they are well uh, super uh, match with the path of the high, higher TKE, because TKE basically is the, uh, in charge of you know, you know, uh, erosion, right? And then we decided to choose uh, the place for the next structure to be where the TKE hits the, hits the outer bank. So here, for example, we, this, we will place the second structure in our second round of simulations. Like we, s we install the second structure here, we provide more protection. And also for the stream, for the sand bedded river, we install it uh, downstream, we provide more protection. 
And then, as you saw, we have also a more scoured downstream, so we would, we would need another structure. So again, we, did, we used the same strategy using TKE and the map of, basically this shows you the shear layer, right? The TKE shows you, shows you the shear layer and the place for the second, the third structure. So we put this third structure downstream, which has like 20 degree at the tip of the second structure. These are all detailed so that the practitioners can use these guidelines for their purposes. So if you now put the second, the third structure downstream at that location, you will provide with enough, pro, you know, enough uh, protection for the, for the whole outer stream bank. And uh, as you see, uh, and, and at some point you say, okay, this is good enough. You don't need to put another structure because it's not economical to put a lot of structure. This way you optimize the number, location, angle, and everything for the structure. These, uh, this is result for other structure, which is J-hook. J-hook has a hook part, has a uh, vein part, and that the hook part, it has some gaps. And as I showed you in the previous uh, simulation, we could capture the passage of sediment through these gaps, right? Um, I don't want to go through details of this here, but uh, one thing is that, like, if you use VSL, um, with uh, these simulations are not very expensive. These simulations that I'm showing you, because we needed to do a lot of simulation, these are 200, we did 200 simulations to develop these guidelines. So for that, we um, used uh, not very fine simulation, and also we used URAN simulation for them. But here I'm showing you the results of uh, bed morphodynamics development um, over over S uh, sand bedded river, and as you see on the lower part, this one is different. Though this is, uh, you see the bed morphodynamic evolution downstream of one of our um, um, yes, sir. Say it again, please. That's right. What we. That's right, that's right. What we do is that we first we solve for the flow fill. Once the flow fill is solved, and then we use the result of this flow field to solve for suspended load. So we, saw we have the suspended load and flow field now, and then we use the whole flow field for bed shear stress, and we use this information to solve the external equation, which is the mass balance, and then we solve external so that we calculate the new elevations. No, we don't do that. Well, that, that's not well. Then the. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm afraid that if you do that, then your whole code would not be stable. You know what I mean? Because uh, you need to, to, yeah, we have a, a true hold number in, by which you, you are limited to the, 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 you can't basically change the geometry, uh, yeah, too much so that that would cause you instabilities. There are a lot of criteria. Uh, I can give you uh, uh, some of my papers so that uh, you can see we have developed some criteria that you change your bed change, eleva bed elevation change should be within a limit. Yeah, so. No, the Reynolds number for this case is over a million. It's a very high Reynolds number. So it's a field scale. It is, it is a field, everything is field scale in this simulation. Yeah, so. So this, this migration, you, you see, if you are looking uh, for this case, the lower, lower the video, you are looking at a time frame of two months. So the. Um, no, it's not. Well, time step. Well, I told you, uh, it's called a dual uh, OSI synchronized dual time stepping method in which we use different time steps for flow field and bit morphodynamics. So we have two different time steps here. And uh, uh, 
we, we assume that, yeah, we assume that the, the flow field or hydrodynamics is frozen so that we use a larger time step for bed morphine dynamics and then we solve, we calculate the new elevation. And then for that new elevation, we assume that the previous uh, uh, hydrodynamic solution is a initial, you know, you know what I mean, Tn minus one of that solution. We have, uh, I can give you the list of the paper that uh, we have discussed in this, this method in detail. No, no. This is a Reynolds model. Uh, that's a very nice question. Actually, I showed you in my previous uh, present, uh, slides that for those smaller scale bed forms, you need to have LES to be able to, to so that the, the small the, the eddies that you capture, the vertical structure that you capture, they lead to initiation of bed forms. So they produce you with enough of perturbation so that these bed forms uh, get generated. But here, we are using URANS. But URANS is able here to do that, while URANS wasn't able to capture those the smaller scales. Here, why URANS is able to do this, we have discussed it in a paper that I can give you the list of it. But, but here we have, in, right in front of this, this you see this uh, J-hook, it has rocks and a gap between them. So it's a very highly turbulent flow. And it has enough of perturbation introducing to the flow that cr causes bed forms to, to get generated. You know what I mean? So you always need enough of uh, some levels of perturbation so that the bed forms get generated. Once they are there, then they will grow in size. As you see, they form, they grow in size, and get migrated downstream. So again, here in this video, I'm showing you the same. And this, this video is a uh, zoom in of this part. So um, here, you don't have enough of perturbation here, although it, go, it, it shows you that how the, the bed, uh, bed morphology is getting to equilibrium state. But you don't have those uh, distinct kind of bed forms that we uh, you know, have downstream of the J-hook. So again, um, I'm done with this, so I'm going to go to show you, uh, to, to simulate one case for you. I have uh, quite a amount of time, and that's very good. So I can go back and forth. So let's see our simulation here first, the uh, Eagle Creek simulation, how it's going on. Sorry. Let me clear here. So, as you see, uh, simulation is going on, and I'm going to look at my residuals. Not yet. Still reading. It's a huge geometry, so it says that, uh, as you see, it says that I'm reading your XYZ data for different logs for the whole geometry. It's still reading. And like it says, the number of nodes and elements is that that for each different logs. I assume this is for each log. You see, different logs, different number of nodes covering the geometry of logs so that we can model it, immerse it. Now I'm going to get out of here and do another simulation. So I'm going to uh, show you a simulation now on um, gravel bed river this large uh, river, which is 50 meters wide, 1.1 kilometer long, and uh, it's uh, one and a half meter deep. So again, uh, uh, this, these are my data. I have the same set of data, control file, boundary condition file, and geometry file. That's it. Uh, so I'm going to show you the control file for this. As you see, I will restart from. Uh, one important thing is that what we do here is that first we run the case without letting bed to get changed. So we assume that the bed is frozen. We run the set case for a while so that the flow field gets to equilibrium. Once the flow field is fully turbulent, we save that. And then we start running the whole thing with a fully developed turbulent flow. 
Uh, then we start actually uh, for the coupled simulation for bed and flow field. But at the beginning, what we usually do is that we uh, develop a flow field over a um, um, rigid bed. But here, let's start. Um, so what I've done is that I have developed that, that flow field here, and I saved it as time step zero, and I'm going to use it for my, as you see here, now I'm, I, I'm not using LES, LES is zero. Again, the same Poisson solver. Time step is larger, quite larger, than the case that we saw for the previous case. No, it's uh, uh, basically non-dimensionalized. Yeah. What is your Oh, for for bed morphic dynamics. For hydrodynamics, it's small. It's smaller than that. It would be like two seconds, one second. It depends on on CFL number. Well. Well, the point is that two months physical time on the bed morphic dynamics one which has a longer time step of like one minute. I told you, we, are, we use... Right. But, but your actual simulation is two months. Do you, need, you mean CPU time or no, physical? No, no, no. Time physical time is six months. Right, so, so I guess the, the previous question is that your, there's a time step constraint by the hydrodynamics, and then you do a very impressive, very long time scale, two months simulation. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm saying is that you can calculate total. No, we don't do that here. We solve flow field. Yeah, we, we just, yeah, we just decouple. And that's just for this kind of uh, simulation that you ha you're dealing with such a large river. Like for the case that I showed you, the experiment in very small scale uh, LES simulation, in those simulations, we don't decouple the time steps. So we use similar, same, the same identical time step for bed and also flow fill. But here, for such a huge rivers, we decouple them and use different, like a larger time step for bed morphic dynamic, a smaller one for uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, a larger one for morphodynamics and a smaller one for hydrodynamic, but we solve every time step for both. Yes, we do uh, cluster mesh around, like for the case that I showed you in, in, in this, around the uh, J-hook, we refine the mesh around it. Yeah, that's right. It's not a uh, uh, it's not a uh, ad adaptive mesh method. It's not that it can adapt the mesh size around different structure based on the based on the vorticity or something. No, but we can cluster it at the beginning. That's one of the capability that we are developing right now. We have two postdocs working on the code so that so make it so that it can have the the adaptive grid refinement method in it, so that it refines itself as the flow develops. Yeah. Some of those guidelines. Run out, you have to uh, Yeah, but yeah, that's a very good question. What we did, we wanted to make sure that these are real rivers. So in a river river, you, you know, we assume that you're not gonna run out of sediment material. So we basically recirculate the sediment. It was a kind of uh, um, periodic boundary condition for sediment material. So the sediments that got out of domain, we collect them numerically and we feed them from the inside. So it's a long river. It has three meander beds. The, the volume of sediment that goes out of the main unit? No, no. Uh, specify the bit material characteristics of the bit. 
oh, those rivers are, are virtual rivers. We, yeah, we, uh, another team that was working with us in uh, Virginia Tech, what they did, they studied a lot of different field escape rivers. So they, they, the, they said that, okay, these two rivers are representative of all different kinds of rivers. They are virtual, they're, they don't exist, uh, you know, in, in fact. Yeah, but we, yeah, we, so, so uh, here, then uh, we have this flux minus one, which is uh, kind of uh, crazy, but it, 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 it means that it, it flux is actually not minus one, but flux min minus one here means that the velocity at the inlet is equal to one. And then I'm using u -rans. So rans, rans one, instead of having alias on, and the sediment is on, and uh, live bed, uh, we don't have convection diffusion. We have, uh, let's have it on because of the suspended load. It's a mobile bed. And uh, our particles have a WS of 0 0.5, which is fall velocity of particles. And uh, you, uh, you ask it to save the data every uh, 500 step. And as, as you see, the Reynolds number for this case is 1.3 million. And inlet is again one. Let's submit the job. So let me see how many CPUs I'm using. Let's submit it and I will. A little bit more for dynamic. This is the shell file that we have. So now we have this work also submitted. And as you see, I'm using only uh, 64 CPUs because it's not a very fine, I mean, very, very fine simulation. It's a quiet uh, core simulation and using URANs. We will come back to the simulation later. But let me uh, show you a mesh that I'm using for it, for this simulation. So here, in, in a, I'm using grid gen to create mesh, basically, for my simulations. And here, I'm showing you uh, the mesh that I have made for the flow field. So as you see, this is a mesh that I'm using in this simulation. So it's a structured grid for my flow solver. It's the background mesh in the context of immersed boundary method. And then, and as you see, it has X, Y, Z, different uh, numberings. And then I'm going to also show you the geometry of the geometry of the river. The code, you, the, the mesh generator or the code? Yeah, no, the channel, so. It's not, so, yeah, you have to pay for it. And, yeah, but for academic use, it's not that expensive, I guess. So here is the geometry, as you see. Here, you can see the geometry of these. Like this test case specifically is two rock lines. So what I have here is, see this? Very thin wall here shows us the, the geometry of the side walls of the river. I have a mesh that covers everything, but then I immerse the geometry of this river, which has a bed, two structures, and side walls. And then the solution inside of the rock wall will get blanked out. Velocity will be zero in, in, inside of the solid wall. And then we solve for the domain which is within the channel. And the uh, flow field, obvious, uh, uh, of course, will be solved on the, in the channel. And then the bed movement at the interface of water and sediment will get solved too. That's what, we've, what is we, we just did by submitting that job. OK, now uh, we will come back to the simulation later. But before doing that, I'm going to show you uh, one more test case, quite uh, fast here. 
Uh, I, I think you've you've seen already seen this the simulation of free surface over the the cross vein, and as you see the uh, simulation shows you that it's it's capable of cap capturing a lot of uh, details uh, about the the structures that we see over the free surface. The other case that I'm going to show you here is the flow. Uh, I think um, many of you perhaps are familiar with the partial flumes. In a re uh, recent project that I'm uh, working on, uh, we're supposed to calibrate the uh, partial flume for uh, local agency in Minnesota. In that project, I'm doing this project. So flow comes in, and then you have uh, type of free surface so that you can measure the flow field. They, you, you force the flow to get to a critical point, then you, you will be able to measure the flow. But the point is that you will have hydraulic jumps down the stream of it. So um, for this test case, we this is the standard test case that have been done with USPR. So they say that if your Q, the discharge, is 78 CFS, then the HA, which is measured here, should be 2.7 three uh, foot. And what I did here, I did the simulation for this case to show that, to, to basically validate the code. And you see the simulation results at different sections. So the top, sorry. So the top one shows the uh, velocity magnitude looking from free, sur uh, free surface. This one shows you a cross section of you showing the velocity magnitude again. The, the black line here is the free surface elevation. And this one shows you the vorticity uh, in the air and in the water. And um, this result was quite good because um, what I got out of it was that the calculated HEA was um, 0.83, or which is quite uh, similar to, and the, the error percentage is very small that uh, it's kind of embarrassing to get such a accurate result for this. And again, the same thing, I'm showing it here from, uh, but it shows the elevation of water, basically the meter. So for this case now, I'm going to show you again, um, we had a question also about the level set, how we um, activate the level set in our simulation. So I have another test case in which um, um, so uh, another simulation, free surface, in which, in this case, uh, we simulate the partial flume that I just showed you. So we have this partial flume. So again, we have control file, geometry file, grid, which shows the, which has the background grid for the flow solver, the structure background grid, and the IBM data, which mimics the geometry of partial flume the wall, the concrete wall of partial flow. And let's see the control file here. Uh, as you see, um, the time step for this simulation is very small because it's uh, really expensive. Uh, that w this is what makes it really expensive because you have these very small scale features and this is a LAS simulation. And if you make it a little larger than that, the, the code will blow up. So you need to be careful about that time step here. I'm using LES2, a wall function. Uh, flux is uh, the discharge. In uh, this, this, the values that you see here are uh, dimensional. Uh, I don't have these uh, things. I only have level set one, which is solving for it. And the only thing that you need to, um, this one is a subcritical flow, right? So you just need to give it the discharge and the downstream boundary condition, which is the downstream depth. And then it will solve for the upstream. But to initiate thing, we also give it the inlet Z, which will change definitely through the simulation. And then you have a, a gravity acceleration, which is 9.81 and um, immerse boundary is on because we have the geometry of this concrete wall on. And body shows you the number of immersed bodies. We have just one. The whole 
uh, partial flow on concrete wall is we made it just on one geometry that I will show you. And I asked it to um, make uh, output files every 100 time steps, every 1,000 time steps. And let's now stop me the job for this. And then we can look at the geometry that we made for this. Submit the resurface. So this is the third job that we submitted. It has 160 CPUs, total number of 160 CPUs. We will come back to it. But let me just show you the geometry that I used for simulation. So this um, here I'm going to use take plot to show you the geometry of the So this is the geometry that we use for So this is the let me also show the mesh and everything on this. I'm transparent. So as you see here showing you the geometry of the partial flume that I used in this simulation. This is the immersed boundary one body, in which is immersed. And the x, y, z of this geometry is uh, the one that I showed you, IBM data 0, 0. And also, I will show you the geometry for the background grid that I used. So it's a 3D shape, as you see. So the black one is the background grid, which is structured. And we call it background grid mesh. And we solve the flow in that. And as you see, the, the, in this context of immersed boundary method, if your node is inside of your immersed boundary, you blank it out. And you just solve for the part of your flow, which is within your domain. Let me zoom in here now. So all I'm going to, uh, I'm trying to uh, say that is that um, it's really um, kind of user-friendly uh, code to work with, and uh, you see that this this mesh is very fine. Um, these are, let me zoom in again. So these are like, uh, you know, you see a very fine structured mesh, and we solve on the, the the flow field in the in this domain and blank out the immersion boundary. And um, I have uh, other slides to show you, a couple of other test cases that I would like to show you. Like one is density current. Uh, uh, of course, it's not a very complicated thing to do, but it's, the code is uh, uh, very good, able to do all these kind of simulations. Like in the simple Cartesian channel, I'm showing you some of our simulation that you can do with LA, with uh, BSL 3D. Um, here I'm showing you the effect of um, 
uh, fall velocity of particle on the density current, as you saw, it is we start with we start with uh, different uh, depending on the uh, you see for this for example in this case you have particles have velocity so they have weight so they get uh, deposited very fast but in this case in which the you know uh, particle velocity is zero it takes a long time and it you know um, the wave of density current goes back and forth before it gets fully deposited and for cases with higher uh, fall velocity particles get deposited very faster and this shows you the the density current in a, a channel which is like a 90 degree band uh, from other view you can see it the end is not out that we blocked it so that the wave gets reflected so like um, like this simulation has been done with LES and to do this you would need uh, I would say two 25 CPUs for like 10 hours to do the full simulation for this density current it's a uh, and you see here the concentration of this material after releasing. Yeah, and um, doing some validations and everything. So the validations, we have done different, uh, compared the result, LES result of ours with experiment and everything. and. Um, the other case that I would like to show is one project that uh, we are working on, and it's about uh, simulating the, the flow field. I have 15 minutes, so I will uh, take advantage of these 15 minutes. Um, we are supposed to install hydrokinetic turbines in um, East River in Manhattan, New York, to pr uh, produce a great amount of energy for Manhattan. And uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, it's a very large scale, of course, river. And um, to try. So this is the uh, East River. This is uh, Roosevelt Island, New York, Manhattan. And um, these 10 locations are locations that we are supposed to install these hydrokinetic turbines to produce energy. The, the river is uh, 15 uh, to 20 meters deep. This, the width of this channel is 150 meters. And the length of the region that we are supposed to uh, uh, install these uh, structures, these uh, hydrokinetic turbines is about two kilometers long. So uh, first of all, we need to do some simulations to figure out what is the flow field there. So there are some location uh, measurements, local measurements, and uh, we have done some simulations. For example, in this video, I'm showing you the flow field simulation using LES. Flow is coming from this way going that way. There are, these two are bridge piers. Uh, it's a very fine simulation using LES over 200 million grid nodes. Um, just because the project is so important to us that we need uh, to do it in a very high resolution because these hydrokinetic turbines have uh, blades that are like uh, 20, 30 centimeters. So we have to be fine enough to capture everything. Um, so um, this was at the free surface simulation. Then we have mid depth and also this shows you the near bed simulation uh, for, for the flow field, for the velocity magnitude. And then we are uh, using this, we are, we are able to um, extract the profile of velocity at those specific locations to uh, uh, figure out that how productive a hydrokinetic turbine can be if we place it at that location. The last one, can I ask you? Sure. Which, which video? Okay. See the little pool on the south, um, well, I'm going to call it the south side of that pier? 
You mean this one? Yeah. Is that does that mean there's a little channel connecting? That's why there's water there. Actually, um, these planes that I'm showing you are horizontal. Oh, I understand. It's yeah, it's yeah, exactly. There is a hole below it, basically. So the, this is the, the characteristics of the VSL 3D, which is a mirror screen 3D. And uh, once we installed the model, um, I want to show you a couple of the slides that how um, it will look like, because we have done a very fine, very fine simulations to, to this is a hydrokinetic turbine. Flow comes from left to right, and um, you see um, this, 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 uh, the scale of this is like a large uh, hydrokinetic turbine. And we simulate using LES. Uh, as you see, we, we are able to capture the vertical structure downstream of it. So that it's a fluid structure interaction as well. So we can uh, calculate the, the, the amount of energy that a turbine can produce for a given flow field. And uh, a lot of uh, studies have been done. This shows you another. We basically scan the geometry of the whole turbine, and if we um, immerse it in our simulation, and then these, uh, the flow when it hits, uh, due to the interaction of flow field and turbine, the, the blades start to rotate and produce energy, and we can calculate the, the details of that. And uh, this, for example, shows you the, the mm, torque that are produced. Um, the blue one shows the, our simulation for the produced torque, and the uh, um, the red one uh, shows you the measured value for the torque, which is uh, basically averaged out. <laughs> it's really great that I have 10 more minutes. <laughs> I'm so excited to have... 10 more than 10 minutes. So in these 10 minutes, I will try to show you a very quick thing. It is, um, I, I didn't have time to show you the, some of the morphodynamic results, basically. But here in this video, in this slide, I will show you how this whole thing works, how you can use the VSL 3D. If it works, hopefully, yeah. So let's assume that this is a channel we are going that we are going to simulate. Okay, so flow comes from here, goes here, and this is the channel, the, the indoor flume channel or experimental facility, whatever. So what we do first is that we use grid gen to mesh it like this, a structured mesh. Okay, the whole thing, and the resolution depends on how many computers we got, how many, uh, how much money we got to buy a good supercomputer, and then. We immerse the sediment layer on the bottom. This is the sediment layer on the bottom. We mesh it. Mesh for the sediment layer can be unstructured. In the, you know, in the context of immersed boundary method, the immersed body has an unstructured grid so that it's more flexible. You can create more complex sh you know, shapes with it. And then you solve for it so the bed evolves. bed evolves like this because you solve for flow field and then for that one. And also you can immerse whatever else you want to immerse it there, like a bridge pier. You can immerse the geometry of that in the middle of the thing and simulate it. So I already showed you the bed morphodynamic I'm going to skip. Here I'm going to show you how we do this. So let's say this small red uh, triangles are where we solve for bed morphodynamics. And this black background grid is for the flow field. So what we do for a specific cell, at the centroid of that, we radiate a uh, vector upward to the flow field domain, and then this, this shows you a red point, and then we interpolate using a high, you know, um, highly accurate interpolation method to get the velocity and bed shear stress from the flow field over the bed, and then we solve for the bed. Then how here I'm going to show you a couple of more cases for validating sh just videos. Like this case is the same case that I showed you before, but this time I'm going to show you how uh, morphodynamic calculation is validated. So this is a rock vein, indoor flume, flow is coming this way. We scan the geometry, so the old we have the geometry of the rocks with all detail, 
we immerse it in the flow, and then we simulate the flow field and bed morphodynamics. And this shows you a video of bed morphodynamic evolution downstream of this structure. You don't see the water body here, but just bed. Red shows you the deposition area that the uh, sediments got scoured, I mean eroded here, and deposited there. And at different sections, if you show, if I want to show you the profiles, bed profiles along A section, B, and C sections, here I'm comparing them with the measurements. Circles <coughs> are measurements. I've done both LES and URANS to calculate this. And as you see, calculations are quite good. Another case I'm going to show you is a J-hook. In, in the same flume, and you see the evolution of bed. This is the simulated bed evolution and development of the scour hole downstream. Again, at different sections, if I want to compare the results, you see a good result. Another case is this uh, crossway. Flow comes from this way. You don't see the flow, but you can see the evolution of the scour hole downstream of it. The blue part shows that this is flow is uh, causing the bed to erode, and the uh, deposition part here. Different sections, if you compare. Of course, this case is very complicated. So, uh, with uh, with the resolution that we used in this simulation, we couldn't. wasn't We were not able to get the same accuracy that we got for the previous cases. But still, it shows a good agreement. And uh, this shows the uh, comparison between measurement. The top one shows the measurement and the LES and URANs. And as you see, URANs gives you better results because it can capture a lot of more details of, of the structures that are uh, responsible for the scour. And I think you have already seen this video, but not the bottom one. Again, uh, we have integrated different at the inlet of this, um, our experimental facility, we have injected some materials. Top one shows you salt material. The bottom one shows you nitrate material. And the one thing about nitrate is that there are some um, uh, organisms on the bed that would uptake the nitrate. So you see a uh, re reduction in the concentration of nitrate down the stream. That's right. But um, one important thing is that the URANS is very, um, it's, it's quite successful in capturing the secondary flows. Like we have a huge secondary flow downstream here that causes, uh, you know, the transport of material over this length here. And uh, if you compare these two lengths here, you have this one, and very similar to that, you have a length like that. But you can't see the same kind of thing here. Uh, that's why, I mean, the pattern, the overall pattern. And uh, if you go, if I go back here, also you can see that um, LES kind of is more accurate in many other points. But the, the point is that with LES, you need to have a better resolution to capture. I mean, with URANs, at some point, you, your result is not uh, sensitive to the, uh, to the grid size because it doesn't give you any better result even though you refine it even more. But LES is always capable of getting better results for you, you know, if you, if you refine the grid. Right here? Well, the, that goes back to the, well, a, there are a lot of, uh, uh, it's a very complex thing to simulate, first of all. And one thing that was uh, involved here was that, like you see, there is a small gap here between, between these, uh, these uh, rocks right here. There is a gap here. And in our simulation, these gaps didn't uh, create it there at the beginning. But after a while in the experiment, those gaps was kind of created because we use kind of uh, uh, glue to, to, to connect the rocks together. After a while, that, that 
the glue was, you know, gone, and then flew, there was a turbulent fluid flow through the rocks. That caused that one. But in our simulation, we all, you know, when we say this is geometry of the rock, it's always like that. It's a numerical thing. That, that was part of the reason, though. So I think I'm done. Be happy to take any question if, if there is any question. Yeah, the the flow solver LES URANS will be uh, available, and then the part of the fluid structure interaction as well. Yeah, but uh, to get an exact date, uh, you can email uh, uh, Forest Atropolis, my supervisor. He, he he would give you a kind of exact date uh, when it's going to be available by the end of this summer. Uh, let me put up uh, his email. So this is his email that you can email him, and uh, you know. Um, Ask him the exact date. Which part? Which part did I change? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. When when we are going to um, release this uh, the software and the open as uh, this open source thing by the end of this summer, we definitely would prepare a manual, but not a long manual that makes it you know confusing, but a short manual that what you need there and what what you you don't need there to change. Yeah, exactly. Like for different purposes, things that you might need to change is like for for instance for sediment material is the D50 of material or, or discharge of flow field or those things that you need to change. We will uh, definitely have a manual for those, and also uh, yeah, it's a it's going to be a very it, it is a user very user friendly software. So for those flow fields that I showed you, um, what I do is to develop the fully turbulent boundary layer, and for that I use periodic boundary condition. I use a simple channel, two meter, one meter, very short, and then I feed the outflow from the inlet, um, uh, kind of uh, periodic boundary condition, to develop the fully turbulent boundary layer, and then once it adds its equilibrium, which is determined by the turbulent kinetic energy status, should be at some. I monitor the TKE when I'm running the periodic boundary condition. When it's at a steady state condition, then I stop it and save the flow field at the inlet section or outlet section. And then I feed that saved flow field, inlet section or outlet section, at at the inlet of my channel. The, this capability is in there, so we use it. <coughs> you could see some save in, in the control file that I showed. Those are for periodic boundary condition and feeding the fully developed flow field from the inside, yeah, from the inlet, yeah. It's very good at scalable. Yes, actually, we have uh, used a um, blue gene uh, supercomputer to, to study the scalability of it. And um, 
we have used up to one billion grid nodes over over about uh, 6,000, 5,000 CPUs. It's uh, still scalable. It's very good scalable, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.